What's up, people? It's your man, Urban Lover, coming from your mama's basement, as always. Today, I want to talk about the Lakers bench. Luke Walton, who is now the coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, who was hired this year, has turned a team that was 17 and 65 around and now are having a winning season so far in the early season. The Lakers are now 7 and 5. A lot of that have to do with the Lakers second unit, which is the bench. Now this bench has been averaging over 51 points a game. Actually, the Los Angeles Lakers bench is the number one ranked bench in the league, led by Lou Williams and Jordan Clarkson. What I want to talk about is how good this bench is. So without further ado, I'm going to talk about all the players, the five main players that come off that bench and why they're so important and why the Lakers second unit is doing a lot of damage in the NBA early on. First, we're going to talk about my man, Jordan Clarkson. JC, everybody and their mother wanted him to start, you know, said that him and D'Angelo should play together and, you know, in the backcourt. And at the beginning of the season, we expected that. But kudos to Luke Walton. You know, he took Jordan Clarkson and actually allowed Jordan Clarkson to run that second unit. Which is pretty much cool. Me personally, I always say that I think Jordan Clarkson should be the point, and DeAndre Russell should be the two because they're both, uh, they both strengths actually can benefit each other. As you can see, when Jordan Clarkson comes in, he has the ball. You know, Lou Williams actually gives him the rock, and he actually had opportunity to actually penetrate, which is mostly his biggest strength off that bench is penetration. Now, right now, he's only playing 26 minutes and averaging almost 15 points a game. He's at 14.8. So far in his early season with 12 games in. Last year he played 32 minutes. It was at 15.5. So he's right around his average. A lot of good things so far we can take from Jordan Clarkson is this. He's playing much more under control. Playing much more within the system. Sometimes he might find himself doing a lot of ISO plays and hero ball. But at the end of the day he still finds himself back within the system which is a good thing. Also on top of that his field goal percentage from last year was at 43%. This year so far in the early season is 49%. His three-point percentage is almost exactly the same. He shot 34% last year and he's shooting 34% this year. He's actually taking less threes than he did last year. Last year he was taking almost four. As of right now, he's only taking three. Now, with that being said, his free throw percentage is actually a plus four. Last year he shot 80%. This year he's shooting 84%. So that's a big plus. Also, his two-point percentage, last year he shot 46%. This year he's shooting 55% from the two-point range. Like I said before, his strength is actually getting in that paint and his little float and his little uh, sinker that he, th he does. And he has a tendency to break players down and go to, you know, and, and drive to his left or right. He, you know, he's a switch hand. He can do whatever he can if he wants to when he gets in the paint. So, Jordan Clarks has been effective some, so far coming off that bench. Also, on top of that, he's averaging two assists. He's almost averaging two steals with 1.7. So Jordan Clarkson right now is playing, playing pretty good at a high level coming off that bench. So I'm happy about what's going on with Jordan Clarkson. And I hope that he keeps it up. Next we have up is Lewis Williams. I call him Dr. Will. Others call him Sweet Lou. This guy has defeated all odds. And so far in his early season, this is his best season yet. Luke Walton has utilized this guy. And all the NAB says, including myself, who said that he should be traded, not according to his skill, but based on the point of his strength, which is his height, he's 6'1". And a lot of people was like, including myself once again, would say, well, you know, at 6'1", he can't play the two. So Luke Walton has made him a combo guard where he actually is playing the point. But with Brandon Ingram bringing the ball down, it makes it more sufficient for him and Jordan Clarkson to be more effective in the backcourt. And when they play defense, he actually matches up against the, uh, the opponent's point guard. While Jordan Clarkson will play the uh, the shooting guard of the opponent. So this has been a good matchup for um, Luke Williams. And one good thing I can say about Lou Williams is this. Number one, right now he's getting only 22 minutes. He's shooting 44% from the field. His career is 41%, so he's definitely up. His three-point percentage is way up. He's average. He's an average 34% three-point shooter. He's right now averaging 39%, close to 40. His free throw attempts are 83. 
He's a career 81%. Um, his assist is up 3.5 compared to his 2.9. Rebounding up by, by a shed of a percentage, 2.2 compared to 2.1. Steals a 1.5. And he's averaging 15.6. He's actually the second leader scorer on the Lakers team. One thing I like about Lou Williams is this. Lou Williams is a streaky player. He is not afraid to put up big shots in big moments. He has hit a lot of good shots at a lot of crucial moments. He has come in and scored 9 points, 14 points straight from last year, even carrying over to this year. And Luke Walton has gotten the best out of this individual. This guy is playing, to his, he's playing his best basketball ever so far in the early season. With him and Jordan Clarkson coming off that bench, it gives the Lakers a dynamic duo of a one-two punch. And it's hard for opponent's bench to match up against these two young individuals who both were both starters at one point in time in their career. Next up we have is Larry Nance. This guy is Mr. Utility. And why I call him Mr. Utility because he basically does everything from hustle, blocking shots, stealing, diving on the floor, getting loose balls, banging his head, going out from a concussion, coming back, still playing high level basketball, dunking on people. He has a high IQ, and he can hit shots when it's necessary. I like to see him take more shots, be a little bit more aggressive. You know, don't pass up a lot, but be a little bit more aggressive. And I don't mean where he got to take 10 to 15 shots a game. Just sometimes when he's open, if it's a shot, a 10-footer, take it, you know. At the end of the day, you got to make the defense honest. But Larry Nance is, is one of those guys that you would love to have on your team. For any NBA team, they would love to have this individual. Now, he was averaging 12 points, but his, his points dipped a little bit the last couple games. He didn't play in one game because of the concussion, but he's only he's getting 20 minutes. He's shooting 60% from the field. He took a couple three-pointers, not too many. He's only shooting 1%. He don't really take as many. His free throw percentage is 66%. He definitely got to work on it, but that also got to do with a lot of him not going to the free throw line enough to even get his percentage up. His rebound is at 5, his assist is at 1, his block is 0 0.4, his steal is at 1.5, his points are at 6.7, so he actually went up point-wise. His rebound is about the same he was when he um, came in the league. Like I said, his free throw percentage, he's not getting as many because he doesn't take as many shots. But Larry Nance is one of them guys, like I said before, is one of them guys that you would love to have on your team. He has a high IQ, and he helps the floor spacing. It goes well when Larry Nance is in the game. Larry Nance brings that energy, and at sometimes Lou Walton would throw him on centers, and he played pretty good defense on centers. He played pretty good defense on pickup defense, help defense. He's an all-around type of guy that you will love, once again, to have on your team. Tar Black. At 6'9", 250 pounds, is coming in with the second unit. Now, Tyre Black, you know, might be under height when it comes to playing against centers at 6'9". Now, one thing about Tyre Black is that, yeah, he know he might be under I mean, under height, but he had utilized his ability, especially his IQ, in order to play physical, mental defense against a lot of opponents. Tyre Black is pretty good at boxing out, pushing his man off the block, so it's so. People like Larry Nance and Brandon Ingram can come in and grab rebounds. Tar Black is pretty good at executing and finishing the pick and roll. The backdoor cuts, backdoor screams when it comes to lobs. He's pretty good coming down the middle and catching that ball and basically going up strong with it. A lot of individuals usually get out his way. Some challenge it and some might win, some don't win. But Tar Black has been a good individual coming off that bench and helping out that second unit. Him and Larry Nance actually starts the hustle man points when it comes to scrappy defense these two individuals lead the way when it comes to diving on the floor for rebounds playing physical d going up contesting shots up tempo style of play stealing getting in the paint you know doing whatever they can in order to help that second unit overcome many odds and tar black like i said before based on his height and everything has still shown that he belongs a lot of individuals will say that he don't play, he's a, he shouldn't play center. Me as well. At one point in time, I say he shouldn't play center. But then we have to look at the matchups. Certain matchups are black favor. Some matches, 
he might not favor, but he still found ways in order to help his team win. Coming in last, but definitely not least, we got Brandon Ingram. Now, Brandon Ingram comes in at 196.69. A lot of analysts would say that he's too small and he definitely needs to bulk up. I agree to a degree. You don't want him getting too big because then he loses his foot speed. Now, all that Brandon Ingram does have to do is work on his upper strength and his lower strength and only pick up a little bit of weight, at least get to like 225. That'll be pretty good at his height and at the position that he plays. Now, even at that small frame, Brandon Ingram has been playing pretty good defense. He has held his own against opponents. He has made opponents very uncomfortable when it comes to taking shots because of his frame and his width. Now, one thing about Brandon is that he's 6'9", and he has a long wingspan. So a lot of guys that try to take shots over him, Brandon Ingram can get back, play pretty good defense. Even if they blow past him, he still can get behind him and use his long wingspan to alter their shots into the point where they either miss a layup or he might get a block on them. Brandon Ingram has come off this bench at, with that second unit as being a point forward, almost similar to what Scottie Pippen and LeBron James as of now are doing. He played pretty good at that position he comes down he brings the ball over the floor he gets the other guys set up he runs the transitional offense pretty decent the up tempo type of style they play he comes in with a lot of energy and like i said even at his small frame he plays according to luke walton system he doesn't play out out of control which is pretty good he plays with poise and right now in 22 minutes and 12 games he's averaging 40 percent front of field goal 40 percent field goal percentage i'm sorry 23% from the three-point arc, and we know that over the course of the season, it will get better. Even in the years to come, he will shoot much better. We know that he came out of Duke shooting 40% from the three-point arc, so there's nothing to concern ourselves with with that. He's shooting 75% from the free-throw line. He's averaging three rebounds, one assist, and almost seven points a game in 22 minutes coming off the bench. And like I said, he's playing under control. He's a very good player, and in the years to come, Brandon Ingram will be the bona fide player on that Lakers roster. He will be that superstar that everybody expects him to be. The wonderful thing about it is that playing behind Lou Aldane, it gives him an opportunity to slowly come, come along, take his time, develop, and there's nothing expected of him because we have Jordan Clarkson, DeAndre Russell, Julius Randle, Nick Young, Lou Williams. So he's playing in a system where he can just flourish. Take his time and develop. So I'm happy for him. And I'm also enjoying the way he's playing the game. So there you have it. The Lakers bench. And we know in the games and season to come. That they will have challenges. They will actually run into opponents. That probably will be better than them on certain nights. But right now in this early season. The Lakers bench is the best bench in the NBA. And they have a lot to prove. And they want to show the NBA, and they're making an impact. They're making a big impact on it. But they want to show the NBA that they're back and they belong. You're not going to come in LA thinking that you just it's going to be a walk, a walk through the park with them. They're going to give you everything they got, and they're going to leave everything on the floor. I'm happy and excited for the season, and I hope that you are too. With that being said, your man Urban Lover, like, share, and subscribe. Definitely get in the comment section and tell me what you like about this bench. And what would you like to see in the future and also in the games to come? As always, take care and much love to you all.